whether you're the saltiest of the salty kayak anglers out on the water with the most experience or the most beginner novice kayak angler out there, we all make mistakes. I'm a kayak angler of three years now, going into my fourth year kayak fishing, and this is a list of mistakes that I have personally made on the water while kayak fishing. I'm not just some random dude that's making a video about mistakes made. These are mistakes that I have personally made out on the water, and I'm hoping that you guys learn something from this video. What I'm hoping to do is maximize your guys time on the water safely and effectively while out kayak fishing and also feel free to chime in in the comments if i miss a important mistake or if there's a mistake that you guys have made that you want to share with us leave it in the comments and it gives the opportunity for all of us to engage in that comment and potentially learn some mistakes that we may have overlooked while kayak fishing the list is in no particular order i feel like each item on the list is equally as important as the next one. So be sure to pay attention and don't take them with a grain of salt because to me, these are very important mistakes that are made every day by kayak anglers. Mistake number one is gonna be not demoing a kayak. You're gonna make a purchase. You're gonna make a really important purchase. Your first fishing kayak, you need to somehow demo that kayak, whether it's a buddy, or buddies that have different fishing kayaks and you're looking to get into the sport, you need to get on them and spend some time on them. Or if it's going to a dealer that has a demo day. Now throughout the United States, there's dozens and dozens of fishing kayak dealers. Now you can get a hold of them. A lot of them will give you the opportunity to come in and demo, or they will host a demo day where you can physically demo every kayak that they have for sale. Number one, make sure you guys get the opportunity to demo a kayak before you buy it. So number two on the list is not planning a route to fish. What I mean by this is you're picking your particular body of water. You want to take a look at the wind, if there's current on that lake, and also where you want to fish to, like where's the hot spot you want to go to. And if it's a new lake, you need to consider this as well because some of us like to fish off to the left, some of us like to fish off the front. Some like to fish off to the right. For me personally, I fish off the left side of the kayak. So what I like to do is I like to look at the map. I like to go to the spot that I want to fish, like the number one spot I want to fish, and I go to it first, and then I work my way back to the launch. We don't get a lot of time on the water, especially like me. I maybe get a handful of hours when I get to go out. So planning your route to fish is extremely important to maximizing your time on the water and maximizing your opportunity to catch fish while you're there. Mistake number three on my list is going to be not making yourself visible. And what I mean by that is not using a flag on your kayak while you're out there or something to mark that you're out there for other boaters to see you or people on jet ski, stuff like that. And as well as the 360 light. Now, this isn't a cheap investment. I think they're right around 100 bucks, maybe 80 bucks. But you guys, if you're out there in low light conditions, you need 360 light so you're seen out there and you need to have something indicating like a flag well above you to show people you're on the water number four on my list is dragging your kayak dragging your kayak is probably single-handedly one of the most worst things you can do to your kayak um from in and out of the truck or on and off the top of your vehicle dragging it across the concrete or the gravel you guys you do not want to do this to your kayak you will punch a hole in your kayak, you will fill your kayak with water, and you could potentially sink your kayak. I've seen it before. The lesson I've learned with my first fishing kayak was dragging it too much, thinking it was gonna be okay, and I ended up burning a hole in the bottom of it and had to get it patched. So do not drag your kayak. Mistake number five is gonna be not protecting your investment, guys. Heel guards. There's the one thing that you can do to protect your investment. Even though we just talked about not dragging your kayak, the inevitable is that you're going to be running the front of the kayak, the nose of the kayak, the hull of the kayak onto a shoreline. You're going to be running up on some gravel, some sand. You're going to be running up on concrete at the boat launch. You can't avoid this no matter what you do. But what you can do is a little preventative maintenance by putting a keel guard on there. There's dozens of videos on YouTube, guys, about how to do DIY keel guards, Kydex keel guards, all that type of thing. 
but make sure when you buy this kayak, that's one of the first things you do is put a keel guard on it. Number six on the list is do not over rig your kayak at the start. What you're gonna end up doing is having a big box like I do right here, full of accessories that you don't use anymore or you can't find a use for anymore. I don't wanna get rid of that. I may one day have a use for it, but there's a couple hundred bucks worth of accessories in there that right now I'm not using. What you can do is start out simple by getting a rod holder and a cup holder. Get out on the water with your kayak and find out how much room you're willing to give up. How much real estate on this kayak are you willing to give up for accessories and where to place these accessories properly because you don't get a lot of real estate on your kayak. So you don't want to go through and buy dozens of accessories or five accessories and only end up using two of them. It's a waste of money. Take it out naked with a cup holder and a rod holder on there and figure out where you could place a fish finder or an anchor wizard or something like that before you buy it or to determine whether or not you even have enough room for that type of stuff on your kayak. So do not overrig your kayak from the start. The next one on my list is a uncomfortable PFD. Do not buy the jet ski style PFD for your kayak. When I'm talking about jet ski style, I'm talking about something like this, a buckle front or a zipper front with the full back. This is what I started out with. And honestly, you guys, I found myself not wearing it more than I would wear it because of the uncomfortableness of it. Get yourself a nice manual or auto inflatable over the shoulder PFD. This is extremely comfortable or NRS also makes a really nice high back fishing kayak PFD. Um, they're a little expensive. These ones right here, the max they run, this is from Bass Pro. I think they run about 100, 110 bucks for the auto inflate. Get yourself one of these because when it's the dead of summer and you're out on the water, last thing you want to do is be uncomfortable. That's super lightweight. It's reliable. It works. I've tested it out myself. So make sure you guys get yourself a comfortable PFD to make your experience out kayak fishing as comfortable as possible and as safe as possible. So the next mistake is going to be not practicing deep water re-entry. Now I have personally fell out of my kayak. I have personally flipped a kayak. Not this kayak in particular. This is the Feel Free Dorado 125 V2. But other kayaks I have been in, I've lost my balance, fell off the side. I actually completely flipped the kayak. One thing you need to do is spend a little bit of time practicing that re-entry into your kayak in deep water. If you're in shallow water where you can touch the bottom, it doesn't make much of a difference. You can push it into really shallow water get back on the kayak and get back to fishing. But the fact of the matter is you guys, you spend enough time on that water, the odds start stacking against you to where you're gonna make a mistake. And if you're not comfortable with where to get back in your kayak, how to get the kayak back over, how to get yourself back up in there and get your bearings back, you're gonna have panic mode when you flip that kayak in deep water. I'm not saying you're gonna flip it, but the odds really start stacking against you the more time you spend out there the more confidence you gain in the kayak. So take two hours out of one of your days and take the kayak out, bail off of it, and practice getting back onto it in deep water. It's gonna make your mindset a lot better for when the time comes, if it does happen, how to get yourself back onto that kayak. It's basically a training session, but you need to do that in order to have confidence in yourself to get back on that boat after you fall out of it. Mistake number nine is gonna be not fully inspecting your kayak upon delivery. Now, whether you get this thing delivered to your house, whether you have it shipped to the shipping dock and you gotta go pick it up, or if you go to the dealer and pick it up, if you get it shipped to your house, when the shipping guy gets here and they deliver it, do not let him leave until you unwrap it and fully inspect it. That's number one. Number two, if you're going to a shipping dock to pick it up. Do the same thing before you load this into your truck or onto a trailer or on your car top. Inspect the kayak. Open it up, take a look, and the same thing at the dealership because guys, these things get shuffled around and they're in a wrapping. They're not always wrapped the best. They're not always protected the best. You need to inspect these. I've seen it firsthand and I've seen the grief people have to go through. They're waiting months for a kayak to come in. Finally gets here and it's got a crack in it. They can't take it out. They got to wait for a new one. Now you're back behind a couple more months. And if you don't do it on the spot, it makes the process even more difficult. These things will crack like an eggshell. 
They move them around with forklifts. They, they bang them around. They pack them in trucks. Make sure you take the time to inspect your kayak upon delivery. Make sure you don't have a crack in it. Flip it over. Check the bottom. Check the sides. Give it a good once over before you accept the delivery. So number 10 on the list is going to be not having a full size paddle for your kayak. Now guys, I don't care if you own an Old Town uh, Autopilot. I don't care if you got the nicest pedal drive on the market. Things can go wrong. When it comes to mechanical parts, when it comes to electronics, things go wrong. What you need to have is a full-size kayak paddle. You don't want a stupid oar. You don't want one of them stupid single-handed paddles. You need something that's going to get you back in safely and fast if you have an issue out on the kayak. And by issue, I mean you could have hurt yourself. Not only could the motor be bad, but God forbid both happen at the same time. The thing of it is, when things go wrong, it happens in pairs. So you need to have yourself a nice kayak paddle. I'm not saying go buy the nicest of the nice paddle they got out there, the sweetest carbon fiber paddle for 500 bucks. I'm saying spend 50, 80, 100 bucks on a nice kayak paddle that will get you back in safely and effectively if you were to have issues with the drive system of your kayak. Again, whether it's battery operated or pedal driven, have yourself a second opportunity to get back in. So mistake number 11 on my list, guys, is gonna be a simple one, but important, and that is gonna be not having a first aid kit on your kayak. I know a lot of people don't carry them. I try to remember to have it. I went out the other day and I forgot to pack it in my tackle bag. What happened? I cut my finger right there on the blade of a jackhammer of all places. Wasn't on fishing line, wasn't on the hook, wasn't on a tooth from a freaking northern pike. It was on a blade from a chatterbait. So why the first aid kit is important because if you get a wound like this, a wide open wound, you're going to want to be able to treat that because these lakes aren't the cleanest. These lakes are infested with chemicals from these lakes being sprayed, you know, the weeds being sprayed. You need to have something, something simple, some band-aids, some gauze, some tape, and some, uh, some type of antiseptic and neosporin there, not only for yourself if you're out by yourself, but maybe your buddy forgot his first aid kit and he cut himself. He's got a hook in his hand. You need to get it out and you need to get it treated as fast as possible. When I, this is when I talk about life-changing events. Like You could potentially get a really nasty cut and infected, and it may take away a couple weeks of your kayak fishing. Make sure you got a first aid kit on the kayak. That way, when an event does happen that needs medical attention, you can go ahead and take care of it right away. Mistake number 12, you guys, is going to be not watching the weather and the wind. Uh, as kayak anglers, we really have to keep an eye on this type of stuff because if there's going to be a change in the weather, while we're out fishing, a wind event starts happening, it can make life miserable out on that kayak. It can make life miserable if a pop-up thunderstorm happens while you're out there. Now, we can't predict everything, and we already know the weatherman's terrible at predicting the weather to begin with. But if we can do something as far as having a game plan to not get caught in these things, that's very important, even if it means not going out. Don't get yourself caught out in some weather to make your trip uncomfortable or miserable while you're out there. Kayak fishing is supposed to be fun, enjoyable, comfortable, but be sure to keep an eye on that weather report before you plan a trip out on the water. And my last mistake is for the fellas, have a urinal on the kayak. My buddy Brian flipped his kayak because he was trying to take a leak. He tried kneeling forward, ended up flipping his kayak. Uh, again, a mistake that was made. I always carry some type of Gatorade bottle. I actually got a personal urinal from a hospital on my kayak now. But have something so you don't have to make a big adjustment um, while you're on the water, especially if it's rough water. Ladies, I don't have a suggestion for you, but for the fellas, make sure you've got yourself a urinal on the kayak because it's inevitable. You need to stay hydrated out there. You don't want to be leg cramping because you're not drinking water, getting enough electrolytes in the system. Hey, if you guys enjoyed this video and if it's going to help you in the future with your kayak fishing, consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the little subscribe button there in the corner. Hit the bell notification that way you're notified every time I upload a new video about kayak fishing, gear reviews, fishing trips, that type of thing. Also, if you're a bigger dude and you're looking for your first fishing kayak, I'm going to leave you a little video right now that you can watch 
that of affordable, my top five affordable fishing kayaks for the bigger dudes. Be sure to check that one out. Thank you guys again for watching. We'll see you in the next one.